June. We're going to be back in Judges chapter 7 today, so if you could get a head start there. Uh, And we're thinking about the growth of faith today, the growth of faith. And I want us just for a minute, uh, just give me a chance to use a big word, I want to personify your faith. Uh, and that means to put a, a, a picture of a, a, a person to your faith. And, and uh, you know your faith better than anyone other than God. Uh, and so if you were to put a, f- a, faith, a, f- a face to your faith, I want it to be age appropriate uh, into, into the way you're living your life by your faith. Not according to, I've been saved for 50 years. You know, we were riding horses in back when I got saved. Uh, not that. Um, but the maturity of your faith. Uh, that's my thought. And so today, if you think of a, 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 I was on a playground with some uh, young folks playing, and um, one of the young men said to another young man, it's my life, I'm going to do it my way. And I'm like, wow, where did he learn that from? And it's so appropriate for a child to say that. It's my life, I'm going to live it. So a child thinks that way. It's my life, I'm going to live it. But as we grow to adulthood, and heaven help you moms, I think moms on the, on the face of the earth uh, have fewer things done their way uh, than anyone. Uh, certainly they have less than the, the fathers in our home anyway, moms. Uh, but as you reach adulthood, there's so little really that you get to do your way because there's responsibilities, there's obligations, and there's things that are just right uh, to do. So if you were to put a a, a face to your faith, would it be, would you be carrying the faith uh, of an infant or are you carrying the faith uh, of an adult where you're being used by God? uh, Along with you is your faith, along with you is Christ, and together you're laboring for the kingdom. Uh, Where are you at? in your faith. Today we're going to think about the growth of faith as we see Gideon. So many people you meet will believe that there is a God, uh, but just that, there is a God. Uh, You worship your way, I worship my way, uh, and for certainly, uh, if there is a God, uh, he doesn't know my name, and he doesn't uh, at all love me. He's, He's just created everything. But as you read the Bible, as you hear some preaching, your faith grows. And you say, wow, I, I see uh, for God so loved the world and that Christ died for me. It's personal. Wow. Uh, and your faith grows. And you come to an understanding uh, that it is uh, God does love you and that he, he grows further. God has a plan now for you. Wow. Uh, God has a plan. And then there's the time when you understand, okay, if God loves me, if God has a plan for me, uh, then I need to step in faith like Gideon's going to do. And there has to be a belief that, that God can do it. Uh, and so, uh, just as Peter, for so many of you are encouraged, if I say we're going to preach on Peter today, so many of us would be like, oh, thank the Lord. Because Peter was just messing everything up continually. Uh, he was misspeaking. He was running ahead. Uh, he, he just got it wrong continually. Uh, And so as Peter is an encouragement to so many of us uh, in the way that God loved him and God used him, even though he was always getting it wrong. Um, If I was going to say we're going to preach on David today, many would be encouraged. Boy, man, David, uh, he had that massive sin uh, with Bathsheba and Uriah, and God loved him and God used him anyway. Gideon uh, could and should be that uh, for us today in the way that God uh, grew his faith, uh, even supernaturally. Uh, God str- uh, Gideon struggled with, uh, is God uh, really interested in me? There by, by the oak tree, thrashing the, at the wine press. Does God really love me? Are you really speaking with me, God? Uh, he struggled with, um, do you actually want me to do something for you, God? Uh, and then here uh, in, in the, the grand finale, uh, we've taken weeks to build up to this. I hope it's not anticlimactic. Um, but the, the, the battle uh, is the Lord's, and he can do it. As Gideon came to grips with that, uh, I pray that you and I uh, can come, come to grips with the fact that God wants to grow us uh, in our faith. Uh, let's pray. Dear Lord God, 
I thank you for your word and thank you for Gideon. Lord, I pray that today at least one thing, Lord, will strike us uh, to our heart uh, that you uh, are speaking to us, Lord. I pray that we would hear it and that we would obey it. Lord, remove distractions, uh, Lord, and I pray that um, you settle our hearts. Uh, we pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Bob, could you shut that air conditioner off? Um, we're going to try and remove a distraction right from the start. That one in particular is loud. I'm going to scoot over and shut this one uh, off. It's already on. I was supposed to do that 10 minutes ago. If you're in Judges chapter 7, we're going to read um, verses 7 to 15 together. Judges 7, verse 7 says, And the Lord said unto Gideon, By 300 men of that lap will I save you and deliver the Midianites into thine hand and let all the other people go, every man unto his place. So the people took victuals in their hand uh, and their trumpets, and he sent all the rest of Israel, every man, unto his tent. And he retained those 300 men. And the host of Midian was before him uh, in the valley. And it came to pass in the same night that the Lord said unto him, Arise, get thee down unto the host, for I have delivered it into thine hand. But if thou fear to go down, go with Phura thy servant, down to the host, and thou shalt hear what they say, and afterward thine hands shall be strengthened to go down unto the host. Then went he down to Fu with Fura, his servant, unto the outside of the armed men that were in the host. And the Midianites and the Amalekites and all the children of the east lay along the valley like grasshoppers for multitude, and their camels were without number. And as the sand by the sea aside for their multitude. And when Gideon was come, behold, there was a man that told him a dream uh, unto his fellow and said, Behold, I dreamed a dream, and lo, a cake of barley bread tumbled into the host of Midian and came unto a tent and smote it that it fell and overturned it that it, the tent lay along. And his fellow answered and said, This is nothing else save the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash, a man of Israel, for into his hand hath God delivered a Midian and all the host. And it was so when Gideon heard the telling of the dream uh, and the interpretation thereof that he worshipped and returned uh, into the host of the Israel and said, Arise, for the Lord hath delivered into thine hand, uh, into your hand, the host of Midian. As we read this text, a lengthy text, we look at the narrowing of uh, the group of people that, that God wanted to use uh, for this victory. And we see the final number there at 300. 300 men uh, that had great faith. Uh, 300 men that I believed had passed uh, an inconsequential test. I don't believe that God cared really if they lapped, I think he was just uh, making small the number. And so I would ask today a question, are the 300 men better than the 9,700? Uh, they started with 10,000 when they came to the water, uh, and the, the number was narrowed to 300. Were the, were the 300 better? And I would, I would say no. The 300 were not better. All 10,000 had faith. All 10,000 heard Gideon's call. Uh, all 10,000 uh, were obedient, but these 300 uh, were selected by God to be used by God uh, as they had faith in God. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 3, I'm sorry, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 3, it speaks of faith and faith growing. In first, Second Thessalonians 1 Thessalonians 1.3, it says, we, abound, we are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly, and your charity of every one of you all toward uh, each other abound. So he's saying faith is intended to grow. 
And as you visualize your faith, uh, your companion that goes through with life and you put a face uh, to it, um, is your faith growing? Is your faith greater than it was last year? I don't know if you're an uncle or a grandma or a parent, uh, but as a year passes and you see uh, that, that little one a year later that you haven't seen, uh, there's a change. Uh, and you might say, wow, you've grown. Has your faith, uh, is your faith, are you allowing God uh, to stretch you? In the Gospels we read that faith is likened unto a mustard seed. With a little faith, you can do a great thing. And again, I believe it's in Mark that, that <clears throat> the Bible likens f- uh, the kingdom of heaven to a mustard tree. So it's gone from a seed to a tree. And in a tree, now uh, it's, it's producing. Uh, is your faith being used of God? Is it growing? And so I don't believe for a minute that the 300 were better than the 970. They each had faith. But I would ask this question. There's more head-scratching to answer this one. The 10,000, are they better than the the 22,000? So when Gideon blew the trumpet and he said, the Midianites are here, uh, come rally for God. Uh, He blew the trumpet. We we know that Naphtali and Zebulon and the different tribes come. And of that first swarm, 32,000 men come. And uh, they respond in faith uh, to Gideon's uh, call. When he says to them, uh, if you're fearful... Uh, if you tremble, go home. Is, is, was it sin for them to go home? And then today I want us to think about God is patient with you, with the faith that you have. He wants to grow you uh, in the faith uh, where you're at. And I, and I would say, no. Those 32,000 men that came, all of them came in faith. And some of them uh, had greater faith than others. But God did not rebuke. uh, He did not openly rebuke the 22,000 men that said, my knees are shaking. I don't know if you've ever been afraid enough where stuff is shaking. Uh, If you never have, come on up here and preach a sermon. (laughs) Uh, It it works great for for the shakes. Um, if, when Gideon said, if you're fearful and trembling, if, if that person was trembling and Gideon said, if you're trembling, go home, there was no sin on that part of the person. Uh, they're, and interestingly, they're at the well of, of Herod when he gives this uh, proclamation. If you're fearful and trembling, go home. They're four miles from a, a host of the enemy. The, it's on the heels. The next step is going to be we're going to be fighting. Uh, and God, my point is God makes provision for you at your level of faith. You have no business beating yourself up uh, that you're not doing this or that. Uh, God has given you faith uh, at the measure he's given it, but he does expect it to be growing. Uh, he's not going to fault you for not having the faith to take your Bible this afternoon and go out into the streets and, 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 and be an evangelist. But there, he expects us to be faithful to the measure of faith that we have. Um, and so as we read this account, um, God uh, is, is patient and God is gracious. And this is not the first time uh, where we read, if you're fearful and trembling, uh, Moses made the same provision uh, for the, uh, the entire nation of Israel in Deuteronomy. In Deuteronomy chapter 20. Verses 1 to 3, uh, we read this. When thou goest out to battle against thine enemies and see, seest the horses and chariots uh, and a people more than thou, be not afraid of them. For the Lord thy God is with thee, which brought thee up out of the, the land of Egypt. And it shall be when ye are come nigh unto the battle that the priest shall approach and speak unto the people and say, uh, and shall say unto them, Hear, O Israel, ye approach uh, this day unto battle against your enemies. Let not your hearts faint, fear not, and do not tremble, uh, neither be ye terrified because of them. There is a charge for you and I to have courage in the midst of the battle. But if, if, 
your courage is lacking, uh, allow God to grow you in faith. Don't, don't beat yourself up. Uh, d- use the right measure of discipline on yourself. Uh, don't be so discouraged uh, y- you quit. Uh, and it, here in, in Deuteronomy 20, we read on in verse 8, uh, And the officers shall speak further unto the people, and they shall say, What man is there that is fearful and faint-hearted? Let him go and return unto his house, lest his brethren's heart faint as well as his heart. So this is not a, an invention of Gideon to say if you're fearful and trembling, go home. God knows uh, that you're at the level of faith you're at and God is patient uh, and God is trying to grow you. Um, and so as we read this story and continue on, there is almost an appearance that God wants to use the 1%. Uh, I think there's a motorcycle club, the 1%. Um, it's a very small number, isn't it? We start with 32,000, and we wind up with 300. I did not use my calculator, but I believe that's a little bit less uh, than 1%. Uh, and so there's a thought that God wants to use the 1%. And in, in Judges 7, verse 8, it says that he, he sent uh, the rest of Israel to their tents. He's using the 1%. Uh, and it also goes on to say he retained the 300. And that word retained, uh, it's really cool as you start to really study. Um, I used to think there's, th- there is a blessing in reading your Bible, without a doubt, for sure. But there is a bigger blessing uh, in studying your Bible. Uh, as you g- get involved with a study, uh, with us or on your own, but get involved in a study, as you start to look uh, at the words, uh, he, it says he retained the 300. And that word retained is almost like he clung. Uh, he, he was uh, in, embracing the 300. Um, these 300 uh, started with uh, faith and probably a little fear, but no trembling. By this time, I would say they probably are trembling. They're, there's 300 against uh, a huge amount. And uh, Job's wife uses that word retained uh, to him. In Job 2, verse 9, she says to Job, she says, are you still retaining uh, your integrity? Curse God and die. She says, are you still clinging to that? And that word retain. Uh, and so, so uh, Gideon has retained the 300. Uh, and God is going to grow their faith in a great, great way. Um, I don't know whether I would want to. I think I would want to be one of the 300. Uh, I believe I would. I, I, I hope I would. I, you can't say it until you do it. Um, but I would like to be one of the 300. I hope you would like to be one of the 300. But the 99 that got sent home uh, late, in the, late, late in today, uh, we'll see that God has a plan. As we continue, uh, Gideon, uh, four signs he receives of God. Four separate signs uh, we, he receives, and uh, there, are, there are six judges in the book of Judges, men and women that God uh, used uh, to do his will. And some of it, it seems that almost that God has imposed his will, like these people were puppets, uh, that God just stirred in their heart. He gave them a strength. Um, but there's six major judges, and there's six minor judges that God used to do a work. Gideon heard from the Lord more than the entire 11 combined. Gideon spoke and interacted with God uh, more than the other 11. And the only uh, judge, and I don't really, Deborah and and Barak were were linked. Barak really technically was the the judge, but Deborah was the strength of it. Um, Deborah was a prophetess, a godly woman, uh, and Barak was a, a, a fearful man. Uh, that actually Deborah uh, coerced and encouraged uh, to do God's will. But Deborah is the only thing that even brought to my mind a question. These other judges, uh, some of them don't even mention uh, hearing from God. Even Samson, when you, when you know Samson as a judge, Samson was not, uh, at least in a recorded way that we have for us, interacting with God. God, should I go and spend some time with this harlot? Uh, there, there was none of that. God just used Samson, and the, and the only interaction we have from Samson as a judge is at the end when he's shipwrecked his life, and he says, God, will you use me one more time? 
That's the only interaction. So Gideon is a man that heard from God more than anyone else. And you might say, why did Gideon hear from God so much? I think it's two reasons. God called Gideon to a, a step of faith uh, in a short period of time as you study the text and the timing. It's not a lengthy time. I mean, it could be a month where Gideon goes to no faith to this monumental mountain that he has to climb in faith. But the other thing is that Gideon acted in faith before he asked for the sign. He, he would move in faith, and then as he moved, he would say, God, uh, are you still with me? Uh, we, we see um, at the beginning there, uh, Gideon comes to faith. Uh, God, I believe that you're real, and I believe that you're really talking to me. He had faith, and then he went and get it, got his offering and presented it to God, and the sign that God gave him was he consumed the offering. Um, when Gideon's heart uh, and his understanding was moved, and he says, God, I believe you have a plan for me. He stepped in faith, and he tore down his father's altar, and he um, blew the trumpet and called all of Israel to him. And as he moved in faith, he said, God, are you still with me? And God gave him a sign uh, with the fleece. I, I never really quite remember the order, but I think it was the fleece was wet and the, the ground was dry. And then the next day, God, Gideon starts tumbling. He said, it might have happened this way. God, can you reverse that for me? Uh, and God did. Uh, and so God gives him a sign, but he had already moved. And he had already stepped uh, in faith. And so here, uh, when we catch up uh, with Gideon now getting that final sign from God, he had moved in faith. He had gathered the armies. They had left and launched uh, their, their four miles from the enemy. Uh, and God, knowing Gideon as he knows you and I, uh, Gideon didn't even need to ask for this one. God's, God's like, yeah, I know. You need some help. Uh, and he said to Gideon, uh, he said, I've delivered them uh, into your hands. But if you need a sign, uh, go with your servant and listen to this dream uh, that I've given uh, as he hears the dream, um, God assures him uh, of the victory. We see in, in verse 14, uh, 714, uh, this is the enemy speaking to his friend that had the dream. This is the interpretation. And, the friend and, the, and his fellow answered and said, This is nothing else save the sword of Gideon, uh, the son of Joash, and a, ma a man of Israel, into his hand hath God delivered uh, Midian and all the host. God encourages Gideon. Um, we see that God was working uh, as Gideon went out on the limb. Uh, God was doing a work. Uh, there's an interesting thing. Fear will paralyze the Christian. Uh, but did you know God used fear to paralyze uh, Israel's enemy? Uh, God used fear. It says in uh, Exodus 23, verse 27, it said, For my angel shall go before thee uh, and bring thee unto the Amorites and the Hittites and the Perizzites uh, and the Canaanites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. I will cut them off. Um, it says that his fear uh, will go before them in 23. And in 27, it says, I will send my fear before thee and will destroy all the people to whom thou shalt come. And I will make all thine enemies turn their backs unto thee. This is exactly what God did here, uh, as Gideon goes and he stands before uh, this host that cannot be counted, God is working uh, before uh, in the enemy and God is working in Gideon to give him the encouragement. Uh, yes, you can do it. And there's, there's each one of us, I think, if we were called to such a step of faith, I wonder really how we would do, not just as the 300, uh, but as Gideon. Uh, it's easy to be hard on Gideon and say, um, oh, you know, he did this and he, did, he could have done that better. And truly, uh, in the end, I don't know that we'll be in Gideon next week. But as Gideon closes out his life, there are truly some shortcomings. Um, but don't, don't be too hard on Gideon. Uh, he's new to faith and he moves in his faith. Uh, how many of us have come to faith and that our only movement of faith is showing up on Sunday? Um, and I'm not re rebuking you, 
But I'm encouraging you, grow in your faith. Don't let it be. My faith means uh, I, I show up on Sunday. Let's let, let our Christian life, God's bigger than that. Uh, God's, God's got something exciting to show you. Uh, don't let that. And so if we're hard on Gideon, keep this in mind. Gideon was entered into the hall of faith in Hebrews chapter 11. And just to give you the company that Gideon is in, I don't believe that the, uh, God would have ordained Gideon's word to be mentioned in this hall of faith. Listen to uh, his peers. Uh, listen to the crowd that he's l- mentioned with. Uh, Abel, Enoch, uh, which of this group, I didn't research it, but uh, n- no sin recorded of e- Enoch. Enoch walked with God uh, and was not. Uh, Noah, Abraham, Sarah, Isaac, Jacob, uh, Joseph, Moses, Rahab, and then Gideon uh, in, in Hebrews 11. He is counted as a man of faith. Yes, a, a man, but a man of faith. Uh, and so I don't, I don't want us to be too hard on Gideon. Keep in mind that without faith, it is impossible to please God. But with faith, uh, even the faith of a mustard seed, God can, can do it and God can grow you. As we see uh, Gideon come to this understanding, uh, again, a credit to Gideon, he falls down uh, before God. It says he worshiped God, and that word literally means is to fall uh, on his face before God. Uh, what, a, what a tribute uh, to God's working, and what a tribute to Gideon that he would uh, put God uh, in his rightful spot and keep himself uh, in his rightful spot uh, on his face before God. I don't know if, if there's enough of uh, that for you and I, um, an awe of what God has called us to uh, and an awe of who God is. I, uh, I, I said it once, and I'm sad I said it, but casually mentioning God or pointing to the man upstairs or uh, casual references to God. Um, there should be, God should inspire worship, um, even the mention of his name. The sword of the Lord and of Gideon, we see this charge that he reads as we're going to read together, uh, verses 16 to 22. 16 reads this, And he divided the 300 men into three companies, and he put a trumpet in every man's hand with empty pitchers uh, and lamps within the pitchers. And he said unto them, Look on me and do likewise. And behold, when I come to the outside of the camp, it shall be that as I do, so shall ye do. When I blow with a trumpet, uh, I and all that are with me, then blow ye the trumpets also on every side of all the camp and say the sword of the Lord uh, and of Gideon. So Gideon and the hundred men that were with him came unto the outside of the camp at the beginning of the middle watch. And they had but newly set the watch. And they blew the trumpets and break the pitchers uh, that were in their hands. Uh, and, 300, uh, and three companies blew the trumpets and break the pitchers and held the lamps in their left hand and the trumpets in their right hands to blow with all. Uh, and they cried, The sword of the Lord and of Gideon. And they stood every man in his place round about the camp. And all the host ran and cried and fled. And the three hundred blew the trumpets. Uh, and the Lord set every man's sword against his fellow, uh, even throughout all the host. And the host fled to Bethsheda, uh, into uh, Zareth, unto the, the border of Abel, Mahola, and Tabitha. Tabith. So God uh, has done a great work. And I kind of picture it this way. Um, the, the, I, I can't even imagine the number, but the, the watch has just shifted. Uh, and, and they f- feel, according to uh, history, that this watch would have been somewhere between 10 o'clock and midnight. And so uh, I don't know if the new watch had caught some sleep and were rubbing sleep out of their eyes as they're coming in. Uh, the old watch uh, has been trying to prop their eyes open, and they're sleepy as they leave. Uh, and as this transaction takes place and the new watch just gets set, Gideon shows up 
with his hundred men here, a hundred men there, and a hundred men over here, and they, and they break uh, the pitchers and they shout the sword of the Lord and Gideon. And I think in the commotion, the new watch is startled and they turn. The old watch turns this way, uh, and this is just my thought, uh, but the old watch turns this way. This one, these guys are fleeing, uh, and they start fighting, and then the guys that are sleeping, I think it just was total chaos. And God used the chaos uh, to bring his glory. But when we see Gideon yell uh, the sword of the Lord and Gideon, and honestly, uh, he didn't tell his people to, to shout it. Uh, he said, uh, say, when he's giving the instructions, he said, say the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. Uh, when it comes time, there's such a moving of God's spirit uh, and, and such a, a, a zeal for God, they shout it. And picture yourself there, uh, so many people, I would want to like shout it and run. Um, I, I would want to do anything other than stand. I wouldn't even want to shout it. I would want to kind of mumble it. The sword of, I don't want to wake anyone up, you know? The sword of the Lord. They, these men have faith that God is doing a work, and they shout the sword of the Lord and of Gideon, and, and Gideon has reversed the honor. Uh, when, he read, when he heard that man's dream, the man said, uh, Gideon is going to be used, and God's going to use him. He put Gideon first, and out of humility, and out of a right standing with uh, understanding with God, Gideon says, no, it's going to be the sword of the Lord, uh, and, and I'm, uh, he's using me to do it. He has a proper uh, understanding, and interestingly, none of them are holding swords. They're holding uh, a, a, pitcher, a pitcher in their left hand and a trumpet uh, in their right. N no swords at all, and, and God does it. Wow, uh, what, a, what a working of him, and what a faith uh, that these 1% these have that God uh, is just going to do it. Amazing faith. And think of this, if these men can have that level of faith uh, at what they've seen God do through Gideon, how much more can you and I have a faith that God is real, uh, God's speaking to you, and God wants you to do something? He can do it. In, in Philippians, that, that fam some of you might have this as your favorite verse. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ. Now, if I were to say, what's the next word? Some of you might say, who strengthens me? And I had to correct myself. I like the details. And in my Bible, it says, which strengthens me? I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. And you might furrow your head and say, let me ma wrap my mind around that as I had to. Because it really, we should, we should, it should say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But today, as we learn of faith and that God wants to grow you from where you're at, whether it's, it's just, you've just been conceived faith or, or you're, you're an old timer in faith, but God wants to grow you. Uh, the reason it says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me, it's the understanding, it's the faith that God is going to use to do a work. I can do all things through Christ. And this is the faith that brings the victory. Praise God. Yes, it's through Christ, but it's faith in Christ uh, that activates the power of God. What a thing to help us uh, understand and to comprehend the faith that God uh, stirred and, and put uh, and allowed Gideon and his men to have that 1%. Uh, I, I, I would like to have a revelation on each study. Uh, it doesn't always happen, but I had a revelation. Uh, and revelations are always so fearful because uh, so much heresy, I think, comes from revelations. You know, I had this thought. No one else in the world has ever had it, but I, <laughs> you know, it sounds like it should come from like a movie where they doing some crazy thing, and uh, I had this peyote, you know. <laughs> I had this vision. Um, I had this vision. The numbers that are involved, we know that Gideon has 300. It's clear, it's repeated. He has 300 men. He's got the, the less than 1% uh, 
uh, at this time. But how many men is Gideon going up against? How many men uh, is uh, the host that takes up the entire valley uh, before him? How many, you think? And so as we begin, and if we were to study it out, someone might say, ah, the answer comes in chapter 8, verse 10. Chapter 8, verse 10. So if we look at that together, Gideon is now chasing 15,000 men. God has turned the, the host sword against them. There's been chaos. They've killed a friendly fire. They've killed each other. And uh, Gideon is now chasing uh, 15,000 men with his three. And we get number a number uh, in chapter 8, verse 10. And it says, Now Ziba and Zalmana, I can't say that right, were in Karkor, and their host with them, about 15,000 men, all that were left of the hosts uh, of the children of the east, for there fell 120,000 men that drew the sword. So it seems like a simple math project. Uh, as soon as there was, uh, you know, Billy had a ball and Nancy had a... And the, as soon as there was a sentence about that, I always got it wrong. But this one I would not get wrong. Uh, he's chasing 15,000 and 120 have fallen. Well, gee... 15,000 and 120, 135,000. And so reasonably, Gideon, with his 300, is supposed to, uh, and a, a hundred each, so that's only maybe uh, double or triple our small numbers here, is supposed to have a victory for God. And in faith, they stand before the host, uh, some might say 135,000. And to put it in perspective, Yankee Stadium on a pretty big day holds 50,000. So if you were to take each of the hundred, they were, each of the hundred would stand before a Yankee Stadium, and there were three Yankee Stadiums that they were separated by. And they're going to cry with a, a, sore, a pitcher and a trumpet. Man, that's faith. But the... The revelation, and there was no peyote involved, uh, the revelation that came to me was, do we have that verse, uh, chapter, chapter 8, verse 10, uh, on a screen? The revelation that came to me uh, here. Do you see this right there? That's a colon. Uh, for those of you that don't have your glasses on or you've got the wrong ones on, uh, that's a colon. That colon means that when we read the 15,000 colon, that what follows that is a continuing description of the 15,000. And we read the continuing description is going to be of the children of the East. Several points, they mentioned that the number of the host was with, without number. Well, 135,000 is a number that I can get to. It might take, a, I'd run out of fingers. I might have to borrow someone else's, one, two, three. But I could get to 135,000. Without number means without number. They couldn't be counted. And several times they mention uh, who is without number. They mention the Midianites. They mention the Amalekites. And in, in order, they mention, oh yeah, and even the children of the East came up. So there's almost an, an inference that the children of the East were the small number. And uh, I, I finally did find some other commentary because I didn't want to preach heresy, but it seems to be clear to me that the number was huge. Uh, and finally, I found one other commentary. He's like, yeah, this, this was just the children of East. So let's say that the other two parties were uh, slightly bigger at 200,000. Uh, and I'm making these numbers up now, so forgive me if I get it wrong. But 200 and 200 is 400, and 135 is 500. A half a million people laying there, and that's, I think that's conservative, laying there where God says to Gideon, I want you to take a pitcher, and I want you to take a trumpet, and you're going to have 100. Uh, Bob, you can have 100 over there. And Jack, I want you over there uh, with your 100, and we're going we're gonna, to... Strike, uh, blow our trumpets uh, and strike our pitchers uh, and the lamp is going to shine a light out. 
oh, dear goodness, what a stretch of faith that would be. Each one of us could, could pray uh, before we part ways and say, Lord, uh, it's going to be good to see you in about a half hour. Uh, it's, it's, it's coming. Um, but God does uh, a great work. And so uh, that number, 1%, uh, is not very encouraging uh, to so many of us. Yes, it's exciting for the 1%. Uh, wow, great men of faith, uh, great women of faith and Deborah. But you, you and I, I don't know. I always did uh, physically on all those silly tests that they give you at school uh, back when we were riding the horses into school. Um, I, I would like to score in the top 10% of the physical challenges because it seemed like it was easy. Uh, but I was never in the top 1% of anything. Uh, certainly not in academics. Happy to be in the top 50% uh, of the academics. Um, many of, who, who here uh, is in the top 1%? If you are, be humble and uh, join us lowly, uh, 1%. Uh, and so as we see God using the 1%, we can be like, oh, yeah, good God, um, men of faith and women of faith. No, listen to what happens in 723. Uh, after the sword has been turned, uh, every man uh, against each other uh, of the enemy. In verse 23, it says, And the men of Israel gathered themselves together out of Naphtali, uh, out of Asher, out of Manasseh, and they pursued after the, Midian, after the Midianites. After God allowed that 1% to step in faith, their revived conditions brought a higher level of faith to all of Israel, and, and, and their faith grew. And at one point, those ones that God said, no, I need you to go back to your tent for a while, uh, they went back, uh, probably sad, uh, maybe a little bit discouraged. Oh, uh, honey, why are you home? Well, I was fearful and trembling. H how do you spin that one? Um, but uh, God wasn't done with them. And God uh, had a time of redemption uh, for them. And God had a time of growth for them. And God has that for you and for me. Okay, sure, we're not the 1%. Okay, sure, I've blown it here and I've blown it there, uh, but I've still got faith. And, I, and, and in today, have faith that God is not finished with you either. And he, he rallies the 99%. Uh, and they gather together uh, as one man and they win the victory uh, for God uh, and for his purpose and his plan. So today, uh, in your faith, wherever you're at, God has not shamed you, uh, and, and God is not rebuking you. You have the faith that you have, uh, but grow it. Don't let it sit there. Grow it. Stretch it. Exercise it. If you're not, I don't know if any of you have ever worked out, uh, but it's better to work out with somebody that's uh, stronger, and, and uh, it's an encouragement. Find yourself around people of God. Find yourself around uh, the Word of God. Find yourself in prayer. Find yourself looking, uh, what God, how can you use me today? God wants to use the 99% uh, for His glory to stretch them in faith. Let's pray. God, we love you. Thank you for your Word, Lord. Thank you for uh, little old Gideon, Lord, that you used in such a mighty way, Lord, because he said, uh, I believe, and because he said, I'll do it. Um, and Lord, because he said that, you said uh, you can do it uh, in, his, in your strength and your power. Lord, help us to see it. Help us to see the application for each of us today. Lord, if we left with little faith, Lord, uh, might we, we leave with more. Lord, if we left with medium faith, uh, might we leave with great faith. Lord, might we look uh, this afternoon even to, Lord, what have you called me to and what will you put before me, Lord? Let me do it uh, in your faith, Lord. Uh, in your strength, in Jesus' name, amen.